Well, hello, party people. Welcome to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro with your friendly neighborhood photographer, Cardi Party. Welcome. Hope you guys are having a good day. Let's go. Let's go. Ah, oh, we got a great episode planned today. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Julie, welcome. Thank you for hanging out during your Tuesday afternoon. Today, we're going to talk about your ideal photo life. Your ideal photo life in 2023. I'm excited to get into another episode. I really appreciate these live streams. Um, it gives me a chance to actually talk to you. It gives me a chance to meet you, learn a little bit about where you're at in your photography career. Ooh, all right. All right, all right, all right. So, today we're gonna talk about 2023 monthly goals, what we're hoping for, what we're hoping to achieve with our photography, as well as um, I'm going to talk a little bit later about um, visualizing. I know it might seem a little strange, but I have a story to tell about how I shifted my energy and really changed my perspective. And in doing that, it's like the universe opened up. So I want to talk to you guys about shifting your energy and how I did that. Welcome, Sam McRae. Glad you're here. Welcome, Julie. Glad you're here. Glad you guys are here. It's always amazing having my regulars hanging out with me. By the way, guys, we will be looking also at photographs later on in photo reviews. So if you're interested in having me look at photographs today, Tuesday, Thursday, I look at all photographs, not just related to our assignment. So today's a day you could submit photographs. All you need to do is type command discord in chat and you will get the discord link. I look at photography from all over the world. My viewers are from all over the world and they're pretty amazing. Not that their amazingness should be something that intimidates you as far as submitting photographs. What it should show you is progression. And I've been doing this show for two years. Um, I started doing this show on Twitch, funny enough, back in February 2021. So we're coming up on my two year anniversary of doing photography streams live, doing photography shows live and mentoring emerging photographers. So <sighs> moving to YouTube was a thing. And um, although I was posting my content on YouTube, I was making clips and posting on YouTube. Still, my investment mentally was in Twitch and Twitch Live because, you know, last year and re going way back even to 2021, I really believed that um, Twitch was such a better live experience than YouTube. Since then, YouTube Live has done a lot and YouTube Live is kind of starting to be a thing. So I decided uh, in the beginning of November, I would stream all of my photography streams right here on YouTube. I moved everything over and um, since then, the stats are going straight up, which is amazing. Up in watch time, up in subscribers, up in engagement, comments, and viewers. So thank you for watching my content and thanks for hanging out with me on my live stream. I appreciate you. Even if you're not able to watch this live, I definitely believe that there's lots of benefits that you guys will get out of this, even if you're watching it as a video. So thank you for tuning in. All right, so, um, oh, thanks so much. Sam says that my short BTS um, cannabis photograph um, and behind the scenes was great. Thank you, Sam, I appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Um, trying to do more of those. I mean, again, we'll see if it gets traction. We'll see if it grabs. Um, trying to, to post uh, a short a day because I know shorts definitely 
definitely increase your visibility and increase your subscriber possibilities. I've also done other really cool things with my stream and with my branding and um, Sam, I'm very interested to hear what you think of my thumbnail. I'm sure you guys have noticed I'm trying a different thumbnail style. Whether it'll fly or not, I don't know, but um, if you look at that thumbnail, and um, I'm gonna make that thumbnail available on the Discord. I think I did post it. I might have posted it on the Discord, but if you save that thumbnail on your phone and stare at that thumbnail, it's 3D. Like it's actually, it's 3D and it's like an optical illusion. It's not actually 3D. I'm not using 3D technology to make that thumbnail. But if you look and see, if you stare at that thumbnail, you'll see it has a very bizarre, bizarre depth. So I'm very interested, Sam, in what you think of the thumbnail. If you're watching, comment on the thumbnail. Let me know what you think. Um, obviously, likes while I'm live get my stream out to more people. Tweeting, sharing my stream to your Facebook or... Twitch or Twitter or wherever you love to hang out with your social media, that actually helps me more than you can know. So I appreciate you for hanging out with me. All right. So let me tell you guys a story. The beginning of the year, I felt uh, the beginning of the year this year was really difficult. Like I, I had, I found myself um, kind of spiraling, feeling a little depressed, a little, uh, not like just I was just bummed out you know what I mean I felt like I should be at a better different place than where I was with my um with my work and such like that like I honestly thought that I should be um but I realized um it had nothing to do with anything except for me it had nothing to do with the universe it had nothing to do with like people having something against me it had nothing I don't know, man, when you, like, for me, winter is really difficult. Winter is hard. And um, it, I live in Canada, as you can see by how I'm dressed today. As you can see by how I'm dressed today, I'm Canadian. But I got to tell you, like, I um, just had a hard start of the year. So I started to um, shift energy, starting with meditating. And um, really just trying to focus on uh, what I wanted my scenario to be rather than focusing on, on what my scenario was. So, I don't know. I started to shift my energy. And um, I, we're going back to like uh, March, April. And it started to started to work started to feel better and of course with March and April um, brings flowers and spring and in Canada the temperature getting better nicer <laughs> so because of that I started to shift my energy and then um, around May I really started to think you know what um, maybe I'll do one stream um, <sighs> Maybe I'll do one stream. Yeah, the, sh the days, the short days are super tough, Sam, believe me. And I thought maybe I'll do um, one day a week live here on YouTube. So back in June, I started doing one day a week live. And right in and around that time, May, June, um, my friend uh, recommended a hypnotist for me to speak to. And I know that that sounds like super weird super bizarre but all right well whatever i'm down to talk to a hypnotist <laughs> so i hung out and spoke to this um hypnotist and allowed this hypnotist to hypnotize me and like i i don't even understand really what how whether you believe in that kind of stuff or not but it's weird it like because you guys have been watching especially for my regulars like do you notice a shift do you notice um a shift in energy a 
shift in focus like that that kind of uh like i believe in it too julie and um thank you for answering um julie says she believes in everything and yes definitely the short days are tough um sam Julie says, um, indeed, it was noticeable. So it really, I think, started with me with this hypnotist. And what I realized that I was kind I was kind of afraid to put myself out there. I have to be honest. Like, even if I was live streaming, I was live streaming not on YouTube. I was live streaming on Twitch, which was kind of like a secret. You know what I mean? Like, I was doing it. I was promoting it. I was telling people to come hang out with me. And you know, slow growth, but my Twitch now, I, if I go live, I have like 20 people watching me or 15 or, you know, 10. It's like, it's good, you know, um, it's a fun, it's a fun vibe. But photography streams, like when I moved my photography streams to YouTube um, on Twitch, I was like at like t over 20, sometimes 25 people watching. So I, I moved when it, it was popping, but again back to the back to the energy shift i realized like i was kind of afraid to put myself out there and i don't know why um i think it goes back to my childhood and i think that all of us photographers sometimes we have just this vibe where we're shy and i've just always been a shy dude you know always and although it might not appear like i'm shy just always been a shy dude so this year I decided to just put myself out there. <laughs> so I, um, anyways, I saw the hypnotist and um, just anyways, afterwards, I didn't feel like anything happened. I honestly, no lie. I honestly felt like nothing happened with this hypnotist. It was just whatever. But uh, days later, felt different and energy my energy was different and my vibes were different and then uh as like the month progressed it just basically kept getting better kept getting better kept getting better had an amazing summer shot so much amazing stuff this summer um created some new clients and created some great work so really happy with how the summer went and then like leading into the fall i thought like YouTube. I really, I've been in YouTube school since there's been a YouTube. And the thing that's really strange is I've been on YouTube since long before the redesign. Since long, like I've been on YouTube since 2007, I think is when I started my account. But I never took YouTube seriously. And I think what if, what if I took YouTube as seriously as I do now back then? Oh my God, I'd be Peter McKinnon, obviously. But it's, um, what I realized is, uh, what I realized is you have to kind of go easy on yourself. Everything happens when it happens, why it happens and exactly how it's supposed to happen. You can't push any rivers and you can't, you know, pull punt. You can't do anything that's out of your, your control. You can't make things happen faster. Um, or slower <laughs> sometimes you know what i mean so i uh i shifted my energy and leading into the fall stuff really started to feel good started to feel like i'm getting my stride and uh youtube school been in youtube university like really thinking about how i can get my channel to get traction how i can get my videos to get picked up by the algorithm how I can, and it really, um, how I can get to a thousand subs, how I can get to like the, the watch time and all. And, and I realized like, all I have to do, let's go, Alice. I'm glad you're here. Let's go. I realized like, all I have to do is just enjoy what I'm doing. All I have to do is enjoy mentoring the people who watch me whether it's one person, two, three, five, ten, a hundred, a thousand. I, all I want to do is um, get to know the people who watch me, help them get better at making photos. And um, 
I realized like if I just focused on the things that I really love, which is um, making photographs, creating video content, and um, trying to coach and mentor people, um, if I just focus on that, everything else will take care of itself. And I actually stopped looking at um, how many people were subbed to my channel and the subscribers are just like inching up. I'm not sure like where it's at, but I know it's like getting close to a thousand. So I don't know. It's just one of those things like I'm I'm on a grind. I, I, I hope you guys notice I updated my thumbnail, changed my thumbnail, whether that thumbnail will stay in that style. I don't know, but we're seeing we're going to see if um, if it gets attention. Um, I'm trying a radical idea with these thumbnails. So um, my titles, my titling. Um, <laughs> let's go, Sam. I appreciate that. Um, Sam says if I can shoot Luda and uh, DMX, anything's possible. Anything is possible. I appreciate that, Sam. Let's go. Thanks, bro. Um, yeah, so I'm just grinding, you know, and um, now deciding that I put I'm, I'm, I'm officially like really doing everything that I need to do and including um, I stream regularly. <laughs> I'm on a schedule. I upload these streams as videos right after that's three uploads a week. I'm uploading short con short form content. I'm also making my own edited content and putting all of my effort into that so i don't know we'll see how um me doing this over time because really with the kind of velocity and quality i'm trying to deal with now this has really only been going on for less than a month so <laughs> i have to go easy on myself so <laughs> anyways guys um yeah that's a little bit about what is happening um Thank you, Howie. Howie says that he's enjoying the change and his this change to, to YouTube, but Twitch and YouTube have their own vibes. YouTube is more of a creative space for me, um, but uh, you're not psychic. I got you. It's definitely, um, it's definitely one of those things where I just believe in it. You know, I believe in um, the YouTube journey. I feel like really there's no algorithm and now if you post consistently and um come up with clever ideas for your titles and thumbnails if you create content that people are asking for if you create content that people are asking for they're gonna watch your content you know for me i'm wanting to not be like so much like on trend i'm not needing to be so much like on trend um but I know that there's a, it's a very viable thing. Let's go, Hell Dog. It's a definitely a viable thing, and it's a necessary thing for people to, for photographers to do. We definitely have to be doing things that are on trend, especially if you're on U on YouTube, in order to get the kind of attention to um, your video content. Um, you know, like you have to. But still, is that what I want to do? I want to make different content. I want to make content that you don't really know that you need. You know, that's the goal. But I'm very interested in what you guys have to say. Have to say. I'm interested in what you guys think about the kind of content that I'm making, the kind of content that you'd like me to make. I'm interested, of course. I want to know what kind of content you guys want me to make. Because honestly, I'm making content for you. You know, that's making content for you. So, of course, I wanna know. All right, so today we're gonna talk about um, your goals, your creative goals, your photography goals, your perfect photography life for 2023. So, Let's get into sections. This section we're gonna call foundation. And today, we're gonna map it out. We're just gonna map it out. You know, why not? 
Let's map it out. So, what I'd love you guys to do is grab a notebook because notebooks are super helpful with this kind of stuff or make notes on your computer. I think that the notes will help you and not because I want this to feel like school, but the whole point of these live streams is for you to be able to get something out of it, you know? And <laughs> although I did talk about what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do <laughs> for the last uh, 15 minutes, I think it's important for me to um, to help you guys through what um, you guys think that you should be doing. Again, it's not up to me to tell you um, what you should be doing, but I'm gonna try to guide you and uh <laughs> on on trend without selling your soul is a fine line yeah listen a hundred percent sam well said it's a it's it's a fine line a hundred percent so let's go to the notes first of all let's make notes. monthly goals so I would love to know what you guys have as some things or hopes or dreams of what you think that you'd like to do in 2023. What are the goals? And first of all, I'm definitely, there has to be a plan, right? There has to be a plan of attack. There has to be a plan of, of attack, right? So. For me, the best way to think of like, what's the plan of attack is, well, fuck, what's the goals? What are we trying to do? You know, are we um, trying to specialize? Of course we are. Or are we specializing already? Um, what do we need to learn? Is there an, are there things what do you need to learn? Are there things that you need to learn in 2023? For me, yes, there's things that I need to learn, definitely. I have to make sure that I don't go too far because my camera's there. Um, so I'm making a list of all the things that I, I definitely would like to learn. I need to get better at Lightroom. There's things like within Photoshop that I'd like to understand more. There's organizing as far as organizing my files, my portfolio in the cloud, like using Lightroom online. There's a bunch of things that like, I feel like I'd like to learn more in 2023. What are some of the things that you guys um, need to learn? I want to get better at Lightroom. That's the first thing. For me, I want to get better at Lightroom. Next, um, I want to get better at post in general. And again, uh, my stuff isn't that posty, but um, I want to get better at post. It's definitely something that I have on my list um also better at youtube <laughs> that's one of the things for me um but again what are some of the things um let's go mark fox i'm glad you're here what are some of the things that you guys are trying to get better at and i'm gonna make these notes right here if you guys tell me in chat I'll make notes. What are you guys hoping to get better at in 2023? And of course, um, what do you need to learn in 2023? Those are the things. What are some of the things that you need to learn? Julie says that she needs to know to learn studio light and clients. Um, get clients or we're going to put clients in a separate section. Okay. Studio light. You want to get better at Julie says video, but these are th things that you want to learn. 
learn and or get better at? Um, what do you want to get better at, Mark Fox? What are you trying to get better at? Sam says time management. Time management and hustle. Um, got it. Getting more and better clients. Now, that's not something that you're going to learn, Julie. What you're going to, what's going to happen is you're going to get better. And as you get better, you're going to get excited about the work. You're going to be motivated to share that excitement, that motivation, that passion about your photography is what's going to be contagious. And that's what's going to start you really popping off, honestly. Um, so Alice says video. And again, that's another uh, all photographers really have to be considering video as part of their um, weekly, monthly routine as part of what we do as a way for us to cr um, creatively express ourselves, um, we all have to really embrace video. It's something that I feel like it's so beneficial. Um, Howie says getting over creative block. Um, so you're learning how to get over creative block, getting through creative block, Oops. Oops. Okay. Um, Mark Fox says that he wants to get better at BTS. Better at BTS. Listen, that is something that I'm working on too. That's a really good one. BTS is, you guys have heard me say before, BTS is a number, number one search term on YouTube. So you can imagine us getting better at BTS and telling our creative stories, letting people in behind the fifth wall to see how we work why we work, where we work, all of these things are super important. Um, that's amazing. So, um, uh, you got a new phone. I appreciate that. Mark Fox says that he has a new phone. It's arriving today so he can do better BTS and real content. Good shit. Um, so for me, another, another huge thing is um learning and i don't want you guys to forget that all of these things that you want to get better at there are avenues angles resources for you guys to get better and just going through some of the things that you guys said here and what i said um i want to get better at lightroom there's all kinds of resources for me to get better at Lightroom. All I need to do is put the work in, put the effort in and um, make notes, research, make notes of what I want to learn so I can then just go and dedicate time to doing that. You know, I, I said I wanted to get better at post. Again, that's the same thing. Um, research and doing the work uh, better at YouTube. <laughs> I think we all want to be better at YouTube. Um, Julie and some others need to learn Studio Light more. You know, learning Studio Light comes from experience. It comes from practice. One can only learn so much about light without practical application, without practical knowledge. So the more times that you get to shoot with artificial light, the better that you'll be. So make a point that you're gonna shoot every month or every week with artificial light. Just make a goal. And those goals, once you make them and you know the reason why you're doing them, they become a lot easier to achieve, yeah? Getting over creative blocks. Getting over creative blocks is a huge thing. And I feel like when we have creative blocks, that's the time to 
um, walk away. That's the time for us to um, step away from creativity and spend time with our family, friends, and um, also change your environment. The biggest thing that is going to re-inspire you is to change what your eyes see every day. If you're able to change what your eyes see, you're definitely able to um, re-inspire, you know? And also, if you're burnt out on photography, if you're burnt out creatively, nothing's gonna bring you back. Not, like, not shooting more. If you're burnt out and you're not um, making a living at making pictures, like you're just doing pictures to get better, if you feel burned out in that context, just stop, just walk away. Like, and again, it can be for a day, it can be for a week, uh, but I wouldn't recommend walking away from your camera for more than a week or two. Um, Cause once you hit two weeks, you start to spiral in another direction where getting back to photography becomes like when you fall off a horse and don't jump back right on it it'll it'll um spiral you into an even worse scenario so if you're having creative blocks and um having a hard time getting over it just walk away step away and uh, come back to it um video much like lighting um how we get better at video is by doing video um there's no we all have a 4k camera in our pocket and what we're trying to do is tell stories, right? And really video comes down to um, a clever, efficient and attention grabbing way to tell a story that people want to know. Um, if you think of videos, not like videos, and if you think of them like films, your perspective on making moving picture content will change that's something and again that's uh let's go dodgers that's advice from casey neistat i can't um i can't at all claim to um have created that but it's all about trying to tell stories and if we're able to tell stories um easily we have this 4k phone in our pocket the storytelling is the hardest part. The storytelling is the hardest part. And once you realize like um, it, you're not making videos, you're actually making movies. Think of it like that. You're actually making movies. Then it's not video. It becomes like, well, wow, I'm making a movie. I'm not making a video. So let's like, let's plan it out. I'm telling you, a week of planning a video makes shooting and Dodgers is in the industry. Dodgers is gonna definitely verify this. It's all in the planning. You know storyboards, you have shot lists, you know A camera, B camera, you know what audio track is, like you map it out and it becomes so easy to create it. And if you call it a film, you'll shoot it in a different way. You'll think of it more cinematic. You'll think of it as more as humor. You'll think of it as something like that people want to hold on to. And um, from somebody who is a very amateur filmmaker and who is like, although I've been making um, film and moving picture content um, for 13 years, still, I'm an absolute beginner, you know, because the way that I think about film has only just started to shift within the last like 12 months so um be gentle with yourself and know it's just about doing um just start just film yourself just tell a story um time management is something that we all deal with um i think is important as far as time management to create schedules for yourself um create schedules for yourself and if you're not thinking about um, your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and mapping out um, days that you're doing outward reach, days that you're releasing video content, and then what does that 
leave you? What days does that leave you to live? What days does that leave you to be able to create this content that you want? Create, edit, deliver? Like you have, you know that we all only have 24 hours in a day and we all only get seven days in a week. You know, we all have the same 24 seven and we don't get much, <laughs> we don't get much leeway as far as time. That's, that's the same for all of us. And you hear people saying that they're busy. What they're saying really is they're having a hard time with time management. So the fact that you're saying that you have a hard time with this, Howie, and um, I know that many of you who are watching this might be having that hard time as well. Truly, how you manage it, how I manage doing um, three live streams per week, plus um, my photography business, plus promoting, editing, shooting content, um, how I manage that is with the schedule. I know exactly when I'm doing things. And I know exactly like Tuesday from two to four, I'm live streaming and I know what I do after and I know what I do after and then I know what I do the next day. Like I just map out my days and um, you can map out your days um, a little bit in advance or you can map out your days every morning, you know, like whatever works for you, how you manage your time is by mapping shit out. Um, all right. What else is on this list? Um, getting better at BTS, but getting better at BTS just really goes back to telling stories. I mean, if you're trying to go behind the scenes and if you're trying to shoot, share and be like, um, somebody who is creating behind the scenes content, you have to think about how can you tell a cool story? Um, and what is that cool story that you're trying to tell? Once you realize that even if it's a behind the scenes that you're trying to tell a cool story, then it becomes easier to create video content. I'm going to show you guys this thing that I shot. Um, I shot this as a short for YouTube and I made this um, last night at uh, again, shot it while I was shooting but then did a voiceover and did an edit and um, dropped this uh, this morning. I'm a photographer and I made this photo. I love shooting this type of work. I'm gonna tell you how I did it. First of all, I used plexiglass as a background because plexi gives you a natural reflection. Also, I shoot tethered so I can see the work as it's coming in. I'm using a two light setup here so I can minimize my shadows also, the natural reflection from the plexiglass kicks back up the light beautifully. On this shot here, I'm doing top down so I have a different angle for my client. I'm also using a 50 millimeter 1.2 right now so I can get all of the cannabis in the frame. And then I quickly switch to the 100 millimeter macro to get in and shoot nice and tight. I'm stacking the buds right now so I show no spaces and now I'm shooting all those trichomes. Cleanup is the funnest part. Here's the so, result. Um, oops, I missed that last part. So basically, um, another uh, secret that I've been doing when it comes to my shorts, um, this is something that I learned from just watching people edit. Um, thank you, Sam. Um, uh, the secret that I learned when it comes to short form content, and again, please steal this, everybody who's watching, steal this. Your content has to loop. And I don't know whether I'm late on this. Um, I don't know if I'm late on this, but your content has to loop. And again, this is only one minute. So I am going to play it again, but I want you to see how it loops. I'm a photographer and I made this photo. I love shooting this type of work. I'm going to tell you how I did it. First of all, I used plexiglass as a background because plexi gives you a natural reflection. Also, I shoot tethered so I can see the work as it's coming in. I'm using a two light setup here so I can minimize my shadows. Also, 
the natural reflection from the plexiglass kicks back up the light beautifully. On this shot here, I'm doing top down, so I have a different angle from my client. I'm also using a 50 millimeter 1.2 right now, so I can get all of the cannabis in the frame. And then I quickly switch to the 100 millimeter macro to get in and shoot nice and tight. I'm stacking the buds right now, so I show no spaces, and now I'm shooting all those trichomes. Cleanup is the funnest part. Here's the result. I'm a photographer and I made this photo. I love shooting this so, type of work. Do you work. see how it loops? You see how it loops? That's the meta. And again, it's something that I'm just learning, but that's how your that's how your shorts get way more views. Um figure out a way to bring it right back around at the end. What I've been doing is showing either a video clip at the end and at the beginning and just the content in the middle. So it ends on the same video uh, clip that it begins. So it loops that way. Um, and I did it there with photographs and the transitions. Um, so anyways, the highlighted subs, um, say that again, um, the subtitles. Yeah, honestly, that's, um, that's this highlighted subtitles for me. Also, I prefer that short to not have subtitles at all, hell dog, but I'm looking strictly at um, analytics and how um, I I don't understand at all what you're saying. <laughs> so, so um, father, um, I don't understand. Oh, so it can end on fanboys. Got it. Um, got it. Um, but did I say fanboys? Um, I forget. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, he lost me there. <laughs> um so yeah i'm just i'm working on content and um let's get back to our plan for um the perfect photography life for 2023 so um we've talked about what you need to learn in 2023 or what you're hoping to learn in 2023 We've also hope, talked about, um, obviously, want to, what you want to get better at. Talked about creative blocks, getting better at BTS, managing your time, um, video. Uh, Julie touched on studio light, and I said, really, the only way that you can get better at studio light is by lighting in the studio. Um, and practice, 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 practice. Um, what equipment would you like to get in... 2023 now equipment you guys know i'm not a channel that um talks much about photography gear much like painters don't really talk about paintbrushes um cameras don't make pictures people with great ideas and a camera make photos um so that is my philosophy to gear but Gear is a means to an end. So as long as we know that gear equals money. Um, if that's um, in two ways. Number one, gear costs money. It costs money, but also makes money. So how we have to think about the gear that we want, need, have to have, wish we had is, will it make us money? Bottom line, that every piece of gear that you think about, will this make me money? Now, if it's lenses, then absolutely. If you don't have an 85 millimeter lens and you're not able to get that shallow depth of field punched in portrait that like is so popular that everybody loves to make and share and show and you're a portrait photographer but you don't have an 85, then buy that 85. If you're a 
um, naturalist and you live in the Amazon rainforest and you're photographing indigenous people and trying to get intimate portraits of them, but also show the environment, get that 24, get that 35 millimeter lens that you need because that lens will make you make better photographs and also inspire. That's the second reason to buy gear. Will this make me money? Will this inspire? Now that's the next and real question. If you're not making money with your camera and if it's not something that you're trying, you're not, hey, I don't need to be a professional photographer. I love photography. I have a living. I make a living elsewhere. I love photography. I shoot photographs to make myself happy it feeds my creative need um i do them for myself i give them to my family like if that's your vibe with photography that's amazing so then if you would like or desire a piece of gear the piece of gear that you should get should inspire it should inspire if you ne don't have a wide angle lens if you've never seen the world through a 16 millimeter or through a 200 or a 400 if you've never seen the world or you're through your camera with a new lens it's going to inspire it's going to make you shoot photographs and that's the next thing will i shoot more and if you're not asking yourself this question when it comes to buying new gear oh my god what are you doing are you just trying to be a store and just hoard stuff and not use it don't buy stuff if you're not gonna just be ripping with it every time that you shoot so when it comes to gear it costs money but it makes money so the questions and the order of priority in which you should place your gear is this does it make me money does it or will it inspire and will it make me shoot more and the last question that you should ask yourself before you buy any gear and this is super super important will it make you guys can finish finish this sentence will it make me better now do you think that photography gear has the potential to make you better do you believe it do you believe that uh, a piece of tech or a piece of photography equipment has the potential to make you better yes or yes depends on the gear right depends on the gear if you're buying a another camera body just another camera body now if you're going from a dslr to mirrorless guess what that new camera that upgrade it's going to make you better it's going to make you better it made me better i know it made me better so me getting an r5 going from the 5d sr 50 megapixels to the r5 45 me megapixels made me better it made me a better photographer because of the eye tracking it made me a better filmmaker because of the video capabilities i researched that camera i spent a lot on that camera you guys all know how much it costs um and it also made me better so um julie says that she's aiming for the r5 hell dog also said that he's aiming for the r5 or r6 if she's too poor hell dog said artistically no but quality wise sure it can make you better shifting from a 16 megapixel to a 45 megapixel will definitely help me produce better images and the thing is that holds true for both you and julie both of you guys are shooting still um dslr you guys both make spectacular photographs you make spectacular photographs with the tech that you have both of you shooting with older tech but know that um the camera will inspire you as well as make you better so that therefore it's a worthy investment and 
has the potential to make you money, you know? So this holds true for Julie. This holds true for Helldog and holds true for, for anybody who's considering transitioning over from DSLR to mirrorless. I highly recommend if you guys are like, I wonder, should I shoot mirrorless? Yes. Yes, you should shoot mirrorless yesterday. You should have shot mirrorless two, three years ago. And the reason, I just spit. The reason you should shoot mirrorless is because everybody is. Everybody's shooting mirrorless. Everybody is shooting um, with eye tracking. So know that, um, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Um, Julie says, as Andy once said, a dinosaur camera. Yes. Um, listen, if if Helldog could replace his camera with a pencil and paper, by the way, welcome, Bear Thunder. I'm glad you're here, my guy. Um, I'm sure he would. I mean, I would, would I trans like transfer my talent for photography to, to art? Would I do that? Um, I don't know. I'd want to do both. <laughs> I want, I'd want to do both. Alice says she loves her mirrorless um oh my god glad you guys are here glad you guys are here and again as you can see i have a very active photography community here very loyal supporters i would love you to be one of those loyal supporters as well so please consider um dropping this video a like if you like my smiling face and think about subscribing um subscribing is free and um if you hit the bell noti you can get notified every time i go live which i do tuesday thursday and sunday always at 2 p.m eastern time all right so that part of your ideal photography life um what equipment do you need okay so next in as far as your perfect photography life. So now guys, Julie and Helldog, you have it. Okay, this is gonna break your brain now. I'm gonna break your brain now. And again, I have I get such enjoyment out of um, doing these breakdowns and like making these notes with you. So here's the scenario. And I want you guys to all visualize this. Helldog, Julie, Alice, Sam, I want you guys to all visualize this. You have all you need. Basically, the universe opens up and you get, oh my God, this pen is um, having a stroke. You guys get everything that you need. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so imagine, oh my God. It's time for me to get a new one of these tablet pens. All right, here we go. All right, imagine you guys get everything. You get it all. And how? Don't think, don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. You get it all. So now you have your R5. Oh my God, look at the tracking, how bad this is. You have your R5. Now, what are you going to do? You have your R5. You have that lens that you need. You have that lens that you absolutely wanted. You have your MacBook Pro. You got your new Mac mini. You got your studio, you bought lights. Now that you actually hit your mark, because you will, and I want you to visualize and believe, believe that you will actually hit your mark and that's a lot to do with visualization. If you want an R5, this is how you um, get your R5, is you realize that um, the artist is always striving, right? The artist is always striving. We're always wanting to have that next piece of tech. We have to have it. So because we're always striving, and if it's an R5, if that's the camera, that's your like gold star, whatever that camera is, if it's a Sony, if it's a Nikon Z, like whatever your goal is, whatever your gold star piece of tech is, it's easy to make excuses, right? Because we don't have that piece of tech. 
right? <laughs> because we don't have that piece of tech, we make excuses. Oh, if I, I missed the focus. But if I had the R5, I wouldn't have missed the focus. Ah, it does. I missed that frame. Oh, if I had the R5 or if I had the Sony or if I had the Nikon Z, blah, 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 then I would. It's like because we're always striving and we make excuses as artists, the best way to kind of counter both of those is just to buy. Just get it. Get your tool. Because once you get your tool, once you get your tech, once you get that piece of equipment, you can shut the fuck up and get to work. Because now there's no more excuses. Honestly, because once, once now you have it, that thing that you've wanted for two years, three years, five years, once you're now, I finally have it. Finally. Now, you can just work and not think about it anymore because I've been in that situation twice. I mean, more than twice, but I'm gonna demonstrate and I'm glad that I had have my cameras here so I can demonstrate um, this point <laughs> and how I got all of these cameras, okay? We're gonna start with the most important camera of all, okay? And how I got this camera, this camera is the most important camera, not, not just to me. It's the most important camera for all of us, this camera and how I got this camera. This is the first most important camera for all of us, this one. And I know you don't own it, but it is the most important camera of our generation. It's the first, it's not even our generation, this came out in the 20s. It's the first consumer purchasable, instant daily snapshot camera. Cameras never were for snapshots. Cameras were never for you and regular people who, I mean, we're photographers, but regular everyday people, it was for craftsmen and you'd have to make a camera and it was like a four by five and you'd have to paint on developer. This is a brownie camera. The format is kind of like not 120, not really, it was like a 126 and you would take your 12 pictures and then you would take it back to Kodak and Kodak would like take your camera, break it open, process the film and then give you back another camera. Now. The camera that you got back might not be the one that you brought in. It was just, oh, what'd you bring? Uh, brownie, flash or no flash? No flash? Okay, they just grab one that was loaded with no flash and they just pass it to you. So this is the first most important camera for all of us, which is what brought photography to you and me. Pre Leica, pre 35 millimeter, the Brownie by Kodak. In order for me to show you my next most important camera and the next thing that I strived for more than anything, I want to tell you how I got it. Um, my, I went to photography school and my design professor was, his name was John Solovsky. And John was such a strange cat. John was such a strange cat. He dressed like Sherlock Holmes with like those hats with like the front bill and the back bill, like one of those hats, like literally Sherlock Holmes. And uh, he had like the tweed sport coat. <laughs> and he walked into class, you know, there's like 30, 40, 50 of us in there. We're all like yapping, yapping, yapping. It's like first week of school, you know, first week of photography school. So John Solovsky comes out, he stares at us. looks around the class then he pulls out a pen it's a beautiful pen now I know it was a Mont Blanc then I had no idea what it was I mean I was 19 he pulls out a pen and he goes like this
and literally we're like, what is this guy doing? What is this guy doing? Like he's staring at a pen in front of like 40 students at the front of the class. And then the first words he says after like a full minute is always write with your favorite pen. Okay. And then he went on to go into a lecture about the artist and how the artist strives, which is the lecture that I told you just now. And he proceeded to say, photographers, you guys are all young photographers. I bet you guys all have that piece of gear that you must have, you must need to have, you just have to have. What is it? I'm like, I, I want a Hasselblad. And he's like, you're going to get one. I, I want a blah, blah, blah. So whatever. So I wanted a Hasselblad. And he said this, how you're going to get your Hasselblad is find a picture of your Hasselblad that you want, the exact one, cut it out and put it on your mirror in your bathroom. So you look at it every day. After a while, you're going to hate looking at that picture. But at the same time, after a while, you kind of just realize like, it's kind of like, that's mine already. I just need to think, I just need to align my brain to that's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get that. So my parents divorce um, when I'm 19. I have to, I'm in first year photography school. I have to leave photography school because I can't afford to stay in photography school. But I did apply for a grant um, from Ottawa because um, they used to give grants for students to go to photography school back then. And I got this grant. And this grant was $5,000. And it was a $3,700 grant that I didn't have to pay back and an $1,800 loan. So I took the $3,700 $3, check. I went directly to the camera store and I bought a... 1991 because it was 1991 anniversary edition because it was the 50th year anniversary of Hasselblad in 1991 so if you bought a new Hasselblad in 1991 it was commemorative stamped bought a brand new Hasselblad and the government paid for it because I got a grant to go to photography school. I used that grant to buy this Hasselblad and that Hasselblad is the camera that started my career. So um, that Hasselblad is here. It is the, still the same Hasselblad that I've had since 1991. And of course you see it is a 1991 anniversary edition Hasselblad mint. I've been using it since then. And um, let me see if you can get a little bit of that T-Star Carl Zeiss optics. Like this is my most prized possession. And um, every once in a while I do a little bit of ASMR. But what I want you to understand is number one, I got this camera. Number two, um, it was a gift because I needed it. And the universe saw how much I needed it. And the universe gave me free money, said, do something wise with this money, young Cardi. And I did. I bought the camera that I shot Pharrell, Tom York from Radiohead, Kanye West, <laughs> Roger Moore, Phil Collins, and so many celebrities, like more people that I can imagine. But it also was my workhorse. It was the camera that validated me as a photographer, the camera that I didn't consider myself a photographer until I had this camera. And bringing it all back around to that professor who said, always write with your favorite pen. And he said, hey, Cardi, what is it that you want? And I'm like, I want a Hasselblad 500 CM classic. And he's like, Cardi, you're gonna get that camera. I'm holding it. And I got that camera from that conversation. I had this camera eight months later. So that's how I got this camera. And again, um, thoughts become things. And it's something that whether you believe it or not, whether you believe this shit or not, whether you believe it or not, thoughts become things. Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, 
either way, you're absolutely right. You've done everything that you thought you could do. Everything. I promise you, you said you're going to wake up today. You said you're going to tune into my stream. You did both those things. You have clothes on, you brushed your teeth, everything that you visualize and, and say, I'm doing this. You just do things that you think that you can't do you're blocking from happening. And I know that that seems as fucking new agey as it gets, but it is 100% wholeheartedly true. And I'm living proof of that. I just manifest shit. Need it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Need it. So, um, yeah, listen, you're absolutely right, Bear Thunder. Bear Thunder says thoughts become things or you get a room in the psych ward. <laughs> It all depends on your thoughts. And you are absolutely right. For me, I think inherently I'm a good person. So inherently I have good thoughts. I want nothing but the best for people and uh, positive good vibes and energy. So that's what I put out there. So my advice, and again, how we're going to have that perfect photography life in 2023 is visualizing you know, and know that if you're striving for something, if you're really trying, oh my God, I wish I had this, then I could really soar, then I could really have an amazing year, just get that thing, you know, and ask yourself, um, ask yourself, is it something that is going to make you money? Is it going to inspire? Um, will it make you shoot more? Um, Will it make you better? Um, these are the questions that we have to ask ourselves before we buy any, any piece of tech. Um, I love buying certain type of tech. And again, that type of tech makes my, um, makes my life better. As you can see by looking at my desk, I, I have, I like, I like tech. I like my stuff, um, looking good. I like. I like um, my workspace and where I sit when I'm creating, where I'm when I'm doing my ideas. I like this to be uh, a really great environment. And you can see I I put on the lighting. I I'm in the right chair. And believe me, the chair vibe took a minute, but I'm in the right chair. Um, dual 4K monitors um, because I just. If I didn't have dual K 4K monitors, I'd just want it. So I just have the setup that I want. I have the camera that I want, um, but it's always N plus one as far as how many cameras you have. It's always how many cameras I have to currently plus one. <laughs> so I definitely want a Leica. I definitely want more glass. I definitely want, 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 want. Right now, I want the R10. I know that that sounds really crazy, but I want the R10 and I want the R10 for video. And also I want the R10 for a second camera when I shoot video and I need a two camera setup that are both like super, super high quality with the same sensor. Um, Jason has the RP and I have the R5. And when we shoot video projects together, there's like a difference in camera quality that's like nominal and I mean, uh, noticeable. I don't want to say nominal, it's actually, quite quite uh, noticeable it's the exact opposite of uh nominal so julie says it's immense difference for sure so i'm uh yeah i'm uh getting some new gear i also bought a new light and um the light that's over my shoulder you can see that's a honeycomb uh softbox that's a video light that is for my YouTube videos, makes my YouTube videos so much better, makes the light on them look so much better, so much more cinematic. And, you know, um, yeah, Julie, I would not get the RP. I would not buy anything right now in that space that's older than two years. Honestly, I hate to say it, but two year three or old is the cutoff point, so. Yeah, I think that you're absolutely right and and, and smart to, to wait for sure. Um, for sure. All right. So did I touch on everything that I wanted to talk about? Do you guys have anything that you want to add that I missed as far as like um, 
social media was the other thing um, that I wanted to talk about, like um, what your plan is for your social media. Uh, I think that there has to be a plan, like a content plan. That's the last thing that I would recommend everybody works on for 2023 is their content plan. Um, that's what I would work on and when you're going to how often you want to shoot um, how often you'd like to shoot and I'm talking about in, if you're not a working photographer how often you'd like to shoot in order to help yourself get to that place where you're a working photographer how often to shoot and then um, when you have a shoot which we'll call like your pillar content, how you, um, your big shoot of the week is your pillar content. And it's just about how you bleed that pillar content to your website first, and then off to your socials. And likely that's, um, oh my God, I really do need to buy a new pen now. It's kind of dead. Um, Insta. Twitter, if that's where you go. Vero, if that's where you go. Um, short form, like reels and stories. And all of them should be pointing back to your website. And then also you're not putting the same content in all of your social platforms. You should be putting a different picture on Instagram, then it's on Twitter and a different version or a different picture on Vero, but then it also a different thing on Reels. And you're using Reels to point back to your post. You're using um, Instagram to point to the full story on your website. You really have to um, have a strategy and think about how in 2023, how often you can shoot and how you're going to bleed out those shoots to your social media platforms. And again, it doesn't, it's not hard. And I don't want this something, I don't want this to be something that overwhelms you, but it's better if you have a vision as far as how you would like it to be your perfect um, content um, flow chart. And then make notes and then in your calendar add your posting schedule and then you literally have a reminder that it's like hey instagram post hey twitter post hey short video and then you can get notified the day before or hours before so you have time to prep it setting a schedule for your outward reach and putting that in your calendar is something that um would be definitely recommended. Um, Malcolm, welcome to chat. I'm glad you're here. Alan's, um, Malcolm says that he has an RP. And again, understand that the RP, when it came out, was cutting edge. When the RP came out, it was cutting edge. But we know that the RP came out um, three years, two years before the, the R5. So unfortunately, at this point, camera is just not the latest and when you go to the camera store when you test an r5 when you test an r6 mark ii and you just see how much faster the focus is how much nicer the sensor is how much cleaner your photographs are keep in mind everybody's looking at work at on 4k screens so because of that that's also a factor and also another reason why we have to be um actually evolving with technology i have to tell you malcolm since i switched from shooting with my hasselblad as my main camera to shooting digital i used one camera my hasselblad for everything and then i had my eos 650 as my as my 35 because there's jobs that you shoot motion or whatever that you can't shoot Hasselblad so I would shoot 35 um so between those two cameras I had those two cameras for um 
from 91, the Canon I had since 89, until 2004, they were my main cameras. Now, when I switched to digital in 2004, since 2004 to 2022, what, I've had 15 digital bodies? 15 different, 10, 12? Like, I mean, I'd have to list them, but do you understand? Like, um, I'm glad you were here, uh, Bear Thunder. Uh, hopefully we'll see you when you come back. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, I, I've had a new camera every three years for 20 years, over 20 years. So <laughs> it's like insane, you know? Um, but yeah, Malcolm, Julie was thinking about getting the RP, but once you do the comparison, um, once you uh, mess around with something newer, um, and also Malcolm, you're doing yourself a service. You, and going back to what I said earlier, will this camera make you better? Yes. Will this make you more money? Yes. Will it make your quality improve? Yes. Will it make you shoot more? Yes. So for all of those reasons, Malcolm, as soon as if you're starting to get big commercial jobs, understand that your competition has better equipment than you and that you can't you can't um, let that be the thing that stops your success. You know what I mean? Imagine if you made French fries and like you're doing them all by hand and there was somebody who had to, who was using machine. <laughs> well, maybe your hand, you can market it as, um, you know, artisan. But after a while, you're realizing like just in sheer volume, um, in sheer ease of the person who's using like the hand cutter to cut the fries versus you. Think of that like you're shooting with an RP, five years old, a five, uh, and then there's the R5, which is two years old, and then there's the R3, which is like a year, like there's so much better tech already. That stuff makes you shoot fat, like everything. Focus is faster, pictures are better. Like you're just able to do more stuff in less time and with more enjoyment. So that's always the only reason to upgrade ever. So. Um, make sure um, on a sidebar uh, that you look into the R5 because I think it's a valid investment, especially with where you're at right now with your investments, you know? Um, I hope I touched on everything. Um, is there anything that you guys, uh, that I missed as far as um, your perfect photography life? Um, I think if you plan your content, um, if you it, like the plan of attack, it doesn't just follow with your content. It goes with like your goals, shoot ideas, shooting schedule, how often you can shoot, um, when you post, what you're gonna learn, um, what you need to learn, um, what you need to get better at, lighting, all that stuff. It all has to fall within a schedule. It all has to fall within like, when am I going to put time aside to do all these things. If you don't schedule it, it's not gonna happen. And you're gonna wake up and it'll be June and half the year will be over and you'll be like, oh my God, I had so many things that I wanted to do this year. Make sure that before the year starts, you map out your plan for the year and then just act on it, you know? Um, I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Let's go. All right, let's get into your favorite section which that section is called Real Photo Reviews. Now I know you love these real photo reviews. That's why you are submitting your photographs to my Discord. All right, let's get into Real Photo Reviews. I'm gonna see what you guys have in store for me in the photo bomb. Photo bomb looks Good. We have new photographs from our man, Devon Shu, all the way from Australia. Dev shot some new self-portraits. Let's have a look at Dev's new work. New work from Devon Shu. Really, really, really textured. Really strong, Dev. I like this a lot. Wow, Deb, this is dope. Super dope. Let's go. Um, really dope. Obviously, the fingers being cut off for me is a little bit um, distracting. Um, I would love to have 
I'd love to see the rest of these fingers. Um, that's a little distracting. Um, how, how would you counter that? You put your elbow up this way, then it blocks your face. Um, again, you have the camera set outside shooting on timer or like difficult picture, like any way you slice it. So um, the cutoff fingers don't bother me. I know that you also wanted to show the tattoo, which looks amazing, by the way. It's super necessary to see that. So I understand why. Now, the layered composition, the layered composition with the um, the background is just killer. I really love how you have your tiles in the background, your out of focus, and the super, super tight focus on the drips, your arm, your hand. It's, it's just really strong. We're giving this an 11, baby. Let's get it on. Well played, Devon. Let's go. First shot of the day brings the heat. We got to bring some smoke. Let's get it on. All right, let's look at another photo from dev now this for me is your banger i mean i haven't seen them all yet but this is just absolutely outstanding i'm loving 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 this very dope dev very dope all right let's look at this as a cover Dev has already pre-cropped these to 9 by 12. Um, look at how that feels as a cover. It's such a textured shot. It really... Are you guys feeling it? For me, this is absolutely an 11. It is a banger. Loving this. Way to go, Dev. Thank you so much for sharing. Super, super dope. Let's look at Dev's last photograph. I think there's three. Yeah, this is really great. I really like the face up to the light and being able to see the light just punching. This is really strong. Really strong, Dev. I like this a lot. Let's look at this one as a cover. Super strong. Super strong. Hope you guys are feeling it. Again, Dev's a, a photographer from India that lives in Australia. He's in photography school. Um, he's been watching me for a couple of years. His photography has progressed incredibly look at this as a cover i'm love 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 dev on shoe bring in the smoke let's go dev good shot good shot all right so dev um gave me three photos and i always rate what i think of the three is your best photo hmm it's tricky it's tricky, it's tricky, but I am going to give Devonshu your best photo goes to this picture right here, Dev. We're gonna call this your best photo, my guy. Thank you for submitting and thank you for bringing the smoke. This is absolutely fire, really works as a cover. I absolutely love it. This is amazing. Dev, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for submitting um, your first submission today, guys. This is Devon Shu. Right. Let's go. All right. Our next photographer that we're going to look at some work from is our man, Hell Dog. And Hell Dog has submitted. Um, Helldog has submitted some new wildlife photography. I'm just gonna count. I think we have uh, six photographs from Heli. Let's have a look. Helldog says, winter is definitely here and that means crap lighting conditions. 700 millimeter, 5.6, 1 60th of a second. Um, ISO, ISO uh, 5,000? It says four to ISO four thousand to five thousand. Okay, I follow. Okay, it says four to five thousand. I'm like, okay, no, I follow. <laughs> ISO four. My camera only goes down to a hundred. How how do you get yours down to four? I'm like, oh, four thousand to five thousand. Okay, I got it. I'm slow sometimes. You gotta bear with me. 
All right, let's get into new work from Hell Dog. Wow, this hawk with a fresh kill. Helly, look at your focus, my guy. Look at your focus. I can't wait until you have an R5. I can't wait because this type of work that you're doing with this type of fine detail, your brain is going to break when you see this with an R5. I'm going to hide my camera, guys, so you guys can get full effect. Let's have a look at this photograph. Let's go, Hell Dog. This is amazing. Really strong double page composition. Really strong. If you look here, guys, this is where our center is of the frame. So you can see we have a good distance of the beak off the center of the frame. Obviously, this feather here is cropped a little bit, but it doesn't bother me that much because the main bird is here and this looks like it's part of the kill. So I'm OK with you cropping that out. This looks great, Hell Dog. It's a very, very great composition. I also love how you put the horizon line. I also like how you have the horizon line low. This is where your focus line punches and just how as we go up here out of the out of the camera, how it just gets uh, more deliciously bouquet. Very well played, Hell Dog. Very good. Great first photograph from Hell Dog. Let's look at another. Great first photograph, Hell Dog. Yeah, this is even stronger. This is even stronger. This is Hell Dog's next. Very strong. I mean, it's a little center focus, but the focus is, I mean, center biased, but the focus is ultra tight. I really, really like this photograph, Hell Dog. Your eye goes right to the subject, right to this hawk. Um, I love how you got low. That just makes this. Um, I, I love this. This just makes this how this bird is like, you know, and also looking for you, looking for you, knows that you're around and is like making sure that you're not going to go take his kill. This is super sick, Hell Dog. Very great photos so far. Let's get it on. Very great photos so far. All right. Let's look at our next one. This next one is very similar to the last one. Although the exposure seems to have dropped quite a bit between this one and the last photo. You can see here this, oops, that's the wrong picture. Oops. Um, you can see this exposure drops a little bit from the previous one, which is here. This picture, this picture, um, again, very difficult. And I do understand that. Um, and I also know that you shoot fixed without any zoom. So in order to punch back, in order to move backwards, you literally have to physically move your ass, which I know is difficult when you're in a hide. So um, I appreciate this. And also this subject was a little wide for you to actually um, create a vertical picture. So I know the limitations that you're up against here, Hell Dog. I think you did a fantastic job, a fantastic job. I'm still having a hard time finding my favorite. Um, it means I have to look at all of them, which is fine. It just means I need to look at all of them. Let's look at Hell Dog's next. That was photo number three. Okay, Hell Dog says second visitor at a new photography blind at the new photography blind that I built with Nikki. Safe to say it's working. Even if the eagles haven't dropped by the buffet yet, they will soon, though. Wow, Hell Dog, you're savage. This is amazing. Amazing, bro. Look at this photograph. Incredible. Just incredible, Hell Dog. Like, such, such an amazing moment. Let's look at this as a vertical. Let's look at this as a cover. Are you guys feeling this new work from Hell Dog? I'm definitely feeling it. I hope you guys are enjoying my reviews. Um, this one's a female, Hell Dog says. You can tell she's a little bigger. Good shots. Good shots. You're getting lots of love from chat. Hell Dog says he can't move the hide. Hell Dog says he can't move the hide. I figured. I figured it so. I figured so. I figured so. Um, all right, this is great, Hell Dog. I love this a lot. I love this a lot. This is a fantastic shot. All right, let's look at another from my man, Hell Dog. All right. 
This is the same female. This is biased on the other side of the frame. Super strong, super strong. And I mean, these these legs of this carcass is just crazy. <laughs> like the legs of this bird, <laughs> the angle of this back is just, it makes this thing look like a torpedo. Look at that, the body shape, it's bananas, bananas. So strong, so strong. Really great focus on the beak. Great focus on the eye. Good exposure in here. Really great. This is great. And again, this depth, this like line of focus and everything out of here, up here out of focus. Little bits of rain happening, which gives you a nice little texture. And then this band of out of focus here is just super, makes this image very dynamic, Helldog, which I love very, very, very much. That is another 11, my guy. Let's go, Helldog. Let's go. All right. And Heli's last photo of the day. Wow. Wow. Hell dog has to come with the smoke, this guy. Look at Heli. Holy shit. Are you guys feeling it? That's just brilliant, right? That's the one, says Sam. I mean, you guys have the same eye as me. You guys know this is the thing that's cracked is uh, the creator of the work is, is sometimes the last one to ask what's the best photo, you know, um, the viewer, the viewer is really, um, yeah, he shot this Sam between four and 5,000 ISO because as Sam, um, as Helldog said in the beginning, Sam, is that weather has turned into winter. Therefore, the light is kind of ominous and dark. So ISO had to go higher for him to get these photographs. So yes, there is like a nice grain quality. Let's go, Ray Cleveland. Glad you're here, buddy. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody say hello to Dr. Ray Cleveland. Not really a doctor, but an incredible time-lapse photographer. Glad you're here, Ray Cleveland. Thanks for hanging out. This photograph, Helldog, really speaks. It speaks, and I like the tone. It doesn't bother me. It looks almost painterly. It looks actually painterly. So good for you. Good for you. And um, very strong as a cover. Very strong as a cover. Fire trucks. Hope you guys um, don't hear that, but you might. So I'm going to... Apologize for that. This is very, very good. I like this very much. I'm going to look back now at Helldog's photographs. And um, by the way, if you don't know that that's an 11, this is an 11. Um, I'm going to look back now at Helldog's selection of photographs. Do you guys hear the sirens in my mic? Very curious. I'm going to leave the mic open here. You tell me if you hear those sirens. I live across the street from a fire station. Um, sometimes it happens. All right, Helldog, let's look at what I feel are your best a little. Thanks, Ray. Um, your best photo from the set, Helldog, I think is kind of unmistakable. I think it's kind of unmistakable. Um, there's two that really grab me. Two that absolutely grab me. And one of them is not the photo that you think. Yeah, Heli, there's three. There's three. There's three. I just want to make sure I have the right ones. <laughs> and I'm also trying to hide them from you, obviously. One, two, one last one. Yeah, three. Okay. So I have three photographs here, Helldog, and I'm going to go over all of them, and I'm going to do them in order. Okay, mm. here we go. Helldog, my three favorite photographs of yours. Um, my three favorites. My first uh, photograph I'm going to share with you. This one is incredible. Like, absolutely incredible. I want you to be 
feel so proud of these photographs, Hell Dog. This is absolute high art. Absolute high art. So this one is a honorable mention. Okay. The next honorable mention is this photo right here. Just full on wow. Absolute wow. Um, I think the reason that I'm not marking this as my absolute favorite is just at 100% magnification when you're really, really looking at it. There is just a little bit of noise. And that noise for me on this photograph is taking this picture out of the top contender spot. Um, composition, framing, and everything, you have it. But your absolute, absolute best photo this week is a slow poke and one that I don't know that I don't think you guys thought I would choose. But this, Hell Dog, is your best in show and my favorite photo of yours right here. Let's go. Very proud of you, Hell Dog. Great, great, great job. This is like ominous and i think that's what you have here is you have you've uh, uh you've managed to achieve a mood like a tone and you've made this hawk feel real it feels real it feels like a uh, human almost like there's a connection in this photograph and that's what makes this one my favorite so congratulations very very well done hell dog thank you so much for submitting all right all right all right all right it's your favorite as well as amazing i, I i'm glad i'm glad it, it's like sometimes my favorite is not your favorite so i'm glad that it is all right let's get into more photographs we have some military portraits um from julie julie says geez these guys are stiff shot with a 6d 50 millimeter 18 iso 640 3.5 at a two thousandth of a second the two thousandth of a second because you wanted the narrow shutters like the narrow the open aperture i guess iso 640 if you're shooting at a two thousandth of a second with a 50, you could afford to drop um, that ISO down because um, ISO at 640, you're almost at 800. You're one click below 800. So think ISO 800, half of that is ISO 400, just half the noise and your shutter speed goes from one two thousandth to one one thousandth, right? That's the same equivalent. And now you've lowered your ISO from 640 or call it 800 to 400 right and you're shooting at a thousandth of a second yes next half your iso again from 400 to 200 halves your shutter speed from 1000 to 500 and you can still shoot handheld at a 500th of a second at f 3.5 right just now you're shooting at 200 instead of 640 I hope that helps, Julie, yeah? Always shoot the lowest ISO possible. Let's look at the photos. I like it, Julie. This is a good feeling. I mean, it's so, it's so like straight up for you. You know what I mean? It's so straight up. I really like how you held the discipline to the cover composition, to the vertical cover composition. I like how you shot them outdoors. I like how you have some trees and some interest in the background, yes. Also, you're short. So because you're short, aiming up now at this gentleman um, means that we have this kind of tree line that's going through with this light area where if you imagine if we were able to A, move this gentleman this way, because it seems that the trend is for this tree line to go up higher. And if that's the case, if we move him that way, then we have just this tree line in the background instead of this patch of bright. 
And you know, anytime that we see something that's light in the photo, our eye goes there first. Anytime we see something sharp, our eye goes there as well. Next, the skin that the skin tone here is minus, I would call this minus a third or even minus half a stop. You can see um, his skin just it's not snappy enough like it needs just a little bit of exposure elevation you definitely have the room to do that with the settings that you gave me and i but visually i want you to visually see that this is minus it's really necessary for you to know what minus a third looks like what minus two, uh half a stop looks like what minus two thirds of a stop looks like what minus one stop looks like like you have to have that locked in visually because looking at histograms and that kind of stuff like you just have to see what it looks like to you does this feel dark or light and put it up against look at another photo and be like yeah that looks better than mine and adjust your exposure accordingly um it just has a little bit of muddiness and also julie because it's overcast because it's overcast um overcast is cold right overcast is cold so balancing those cold shadows um you can do sometimes with exposure and color balance so this i would have shot this um if normal is normal um, and on your camera, you have the zero, and then it goes one, two, three in the plus direction, and it goes minus one, two, three in the negative direction, and that's normal. Um, I would do this one, two clicks, like that, click, click, next stop, I would do that one click um, pus. And again, you do that with exposure compensation, and then everything that you shoot um, is that exposure, yeah? Uh, small things, but it's something that um, you're very good with your female skin exposure. Yes or yes, right? You're very good with your skin exposure, girl, with women. Just um, you got to nail it with the boys, too. Julie, this is fucking good photography. It's good photography, but you're just so silly mistakes. Like, look at the light on this man's face, Julie. Like, it's, it's really almost like crazy looking but it's underexposed do you see it it's under right it's under like um like this is some martin scholler stuff like you're really onto a portrait style but just reprocess them just reprocess them because i don't think that like um you but you see it on stream right like looking at it on stream you can see that it feels dark use um your mac are you on a mac right now looking if you're on a mac use your mac monitor turn the brightness to like mid and then turn the brightness to like a hundred and then see see what it looks like at a hundred it shouldn't look underexposed still right you're saying you you are and it looks dull yeah it's something that um Still work, Julie's still working on her monitor settings, but Julie, this is a banger photograph, like so strong. It's just the exposure. That's all. That's the only thing that's missing. Everything else, this is, even if you're calling it a boring picture, you executed these Ukrainians very well. You did this very well. Again, the same thing is holding true with where you put this photog this subject, I mean, this photographer, <laughs> where you put this subject, you see the line of bright, where does our eye go first? It goes into this area of the photograph, right? This area here, before we see anything else, we see this patch of sky, and then you can see how it's pushing through his head. It's the same thing as the other photo. You just need to push them over so you have monochromatic. Give me textures, but monochromatic texture, I think that that's the thing that you missed with this set is um, choosing a background so it can just be monochromatic and a contrast against the color of their suits, right? So that's a small thing. Um, but yeah, Sam is saying he can't wait for the brighter repost. I'm saying the same thing. I want to see this with the right exposure because 
you're so close. You're so close. Also, something that's super strange is his sh head is exactly in the center of this frame, but his shoulders aren't. Explain that. Explain that. Does he have like, is he like this? <laughs> it's so bizarre, right? His head's in the center, but his shoulders aren't. Explain. Explain. It's very weird. <laughs> Julie, this is um, an excellent photograph. And although it's not within what you normally shoot, it is portraiture. It is your specialty. It's natural light. It's your specialty. Don't get nervous when you're on a job. And I know this was a job. Don't get nervous when you're on a job. Do that natural photography that you know how to do and slow down a bit okay you have to slow down a bit because i think i think you move too fast i think that you're so nervous and, and, and answer if you if i'm right i think that you moved so quickly that you actually like miss miss stuff is do you think that that's true julie It is. <sighs> know that being aware is is all of it. Being aware of what you do becomes very easy to correct. You're aware of it. The worst is not knowing. You know. Um. This is okay. This is with a 6D from 10 years ago and a $100. 50 millimeter lens like julie this is so good and the photography this the light everything that you did with this stuff julie is really on point i even like the close-upness of this photograph you definitely executed this job well i think it's going to be amazing with the reprocess i know that he wasn't probably allowed to take his his stamp off which is very distracting um his name tag there is the option of punching in and kind of taking out his name tag like you do have that option um but know that the more that you do these editorial jobs the more experience that you have doing these editorial jobs the better you'll get the more experience that you have doing these editorial jobs, the better you'll get, the more confident you'll have. And when you walk into the project, when you walk into the location, you start knowing what you're looking for, you know? And also, it's okay if you don't see it right away. Just be like, I'm looking for something. <laughs> you know what I'm looking for a location, you know? It's okay. It's okay. Um, you see, you've assisted me. You see how I walk around like crazy. All right, Helldog has um, uploaded um, some video of the buzzard feeding. This is just a no sound video for us to get a little bit of this moving. Let's have a look at this before we get into our next submission. And handheld. Handheld tell Heli, yeah. Or propped. Is this no tripod? Yeah, I figured so. This is fantastic, Heli. Obviously, there's like a, ro a roaming focus and also tracking this bird. This is all, you did great though, Heli. Great job, great job, great job, honestly. All right, guys, that is some photography from Helldog video wise and photographs from Julie. Going back to Julie, um, 
I'm going to give you, uh, I don't think you need me to tell you what your best photo was from this set. If we look at these three, one, two, three. I think um, the third picture, this, I mean, they're all almost virtually the same photo. Um, exposure here is a little better than here. Um, the exposure here is a little better, but all of them are a little off. But if I had to choose the best photo, it would be this one right here, Julie. Absolutely. Let's go. Thank you for submitting. This is very dope. Know that you learn every time you look through your camera. You learn something every time you do a job. You learn something every time you work editorially. Um, so um, Sam says, if you tried toggling Lightroom slash Photoshop colors from white, black, gray, I find that helps with brightness. Yes, Sam, genius. Um, what Sam's saying is, if you're looking at this photo right here and imagine that this is in Photoshop and not, cause I don't have Photoshop open right now, but imagine this was not Photoshop, but this is, I mean, <laughs> and you right click here in Photoshop, you can change your background. Um, when I do post on images on black, I make my black, my background black. So I look for where there's no difference, no difference between the DMAX black, black Photoshop canvas and my black background. And that's how I adjust my black. Next, when I shoot to white, or if there's issues with brightness, you make that Photoshop can you make your Photoshop canvas a white and then you can literally match your white until you see the picture just look seamless you can't see the borders anymore and that's how you match your white so changing your Photoshop background definitely helps you with exposure so Sam props to that that is definitely um <laughs> sorry Ray I'm gonna drop that um yeah, I definitely recommend doing that for sure, for sure, for sure. Julie, I would say this last one, if I didn't say that already, is your best photo, your best photo from the set. So thank you very much for submitting. Yeah, you can. If you right click on the background in Photoshop, you can change it, absolutely. Welcome turtle, glad you're here, buddy. Glad you're here. By the way, guys, I did make a new video called, um, Hey, Emerging Photographer. I made this for you. And it is about seven key steps that you can go through to increase your chances to making some money uh, this year with your camera. If you guys haven't watched that video, it's definitely worth a watch. Um, please consider taking 10 or 13 minutes and watching that video. Uh, I've also, um, for those of you guys who are new, I'm always interested in how you found me. What made you click my thumbnail? Always interested in that. So definitely leave a comment as to how you found me. Um, and we have some photos from Sam McRae. All right. Um, actually, let me just show uh, quickly the hide that Helldog and Nikki are using. So we have an idea as to where Nikki and Helldog are shooting from. They are shooting inside here. This is their hide. Very, very dope. Thank you so much for sharing, Helldog. Appreciate that. Let's look back now at Sam McRae says, scan of a little three inch print my grandpa made. Pre World War II in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Um, I'll clean it up more but he loves it very small. So this is um, a print that his grandma made pre-World War II. So this is uh, 40s in Ontario, Canada. Very cool, Sam. Very cool. Very cool image. Look at the ass on that man. <laughs> Sam, you come from good genes, buddy. <laughs> well played, Sam. Thanks for sharing that. I'm so glad you have that. That's amazing that you guys have that. Guys, 
that wraps up this week's real photo reviews. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks everybody who submitted. Photos were dope. I'm going to award um, today's best in show, which I like to do every Tuesday and Thursday. I give the photo of the day award, but we call it best in show. We call it best in show. We call it best in show. Now there are one, two, three, four submissions. Four submissions. Holy, it's between two photographs, people. It is between two photographs. So therefore, we are going to give it to two photographs. We are going to give it to two photographs. I can't not. I can't not. It, it's, it's almost like unfair for me to not recognize these two photographers today for their exceptional work. Uh, our first best in show. Only when it's tied do I do this. Our first best in show goes to Hell Dog with this photograph right here. Best in show today, people. Very well played, Hell Dog. Thanks for submitting. Best in show. Our second and our last best in show. And again, I couldn't give it to just one. They are in very different photographs, very different photographers in very different categories. Best in show. Also goes to Devon Shu with this picture right here. Best in show. Incredible portrait. Incredible self-portrait. Incredible. So Hell Dog, Devon Shu. Congratulations for your best in shows. Thank you so much for submitting. Um, I'm sorry, my soundbite, da baby, let's go, is a little loud. I will adjust it after stream. Guys, if you like my smiling face, please consider subscribing. I do these live streams where I do photo reviews, where I do insights, inspiration. I share with you um, the craziest photographers around the world. Tuesday, Thursday streams are a little bit more casual. I can actually talk to you a little bit more. Um, Sunday show, I put together a show. I do show prep to inspire, motivate, and a little bit of a hint as to what's happening for 2023 for our the photography streams is that we are changing our um, assignments are no longer going to be happening. There's no longer going to be an assignment at the end of every behind the picture episode. But what there will be is a challenge. There's going to be themed challenges every month throughout the year of 2023, starting in January. And these challenges are going to be under an umbrella. So January, there's going to be a challenge and there's going to be four sub challenges under that that all go to the goal now um i'm going to be giving away merch to challenge winners so if you win a challenge you're gonna get a t-shirt you're gonna get something cool sent to you um challenge winners every month so in order to be a challenge winner you have to do these challenges and how i'm structuring the challenges, how structuring the challenges is on a theme. And if you do the challenges, you're going to learn. Oh my God, I did four challenges this month. Now I know how to do this, 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 and this that I didn't know how to do at the beginning of the month. If you go through the entire year with me and do these monthly challenges, guess what? At the end of the year, I just gave you photography school. And you did it without even realizing you were in photography school, without even realizing that you were doing assignments because of the language. I'm, sh I'm changing the language. I'm challenging you to do this. Challenge is different than an assignment. A challenge, people want to do challenges. Assignments, it feels like school. Although what I'm trying to get you to shape your brain 
is no assignments mean money getting experience when someone says go do this picture and then you go do it and deliver it that person gives you money that's creativity on demand which for two years i've been trying to get you guys amped up with i'm shifting the focus now and making these challenges so you know there's a there's a, a victory there's a result that happens after you do the challenge after you do the challenge essentially each one of these challenges is going to create a new portfolio picture for you it's going to create a new portfolio picture so if you do all of the challenges that's 52 new portfolio pictures for you for next year that's just from watching my show so it's an idea it's something that i am doing curbing um do let me know guys before i wrap up what you guys think of my thumbnail um you don't have to tell me um live but you can send me a dm or whatever i am trying new thumbnail angles um i'm definitely using a radical thumbnail idea angle it's also 3d by the way it's a 3d thumbnail today so i have not looked at all by the way today how many people are watching i have no idea the whole stream so if you guys watched today and enjoyed please consider tapping the like button please consider subscribing if you like my smiling ranty face um I got new videos to work on. I got something else I'm trying to put out before week's end, trying to get out something new by Friday. So I am gonna go and do a little bit of an edit, but you guys know I am here to help you guys get to that next level. Don't forget you get better every single time you look through that little window. You guys know me, I'm Cardi. Love you all. Thank you for watching, supporting, and we'll see you on the next one. You're very welcome, guys. Thanks for watching. Watching my videos, liking my videos, commenting helps more than you could possibly imagine. So everybody who does that, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Stay safe out there. be amazing if you guys could leave your goals for 2023 in the comments.